Have you ever spent a whole day being busy but not actually got much stuff actually done? Time is one of the most important and valuable things of everyone's lives and this is especially true for students who are trying to achieve very highly. How are we expected to have enough time to focus on five plus subjects? Maybe for some people the UCAT as well. For work, family and friends, other commitments like music and sport as well. Well, it actually is possible but only if you focus on being productive and not just busy. Hey guys, Archer here, a second year medical student and on this channel we focus on learning how to learn so we can spend more time intentionally on the things that actually matter and the people that matter to us. Okay, so here's the thing. If you are not focusing on study techniques as I consistently mentioned on this channel, then you are agreeing to wasting time by studying in less efficient ways. Technically, you'll be working for harder and longer, but to get even maybe not even the same results, but worse. You can still score the results you want by using less efficient techniques, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be more likely. Eventually, or maybe not, you'll realize that staying in a safe bubble with the study techniques that you have is actually what is causing you to waste time. And this was actually me in year 10. I was studying, studying, studying even more than I did in year 12, and I was getting the results that I wanted, but it just seemed to be so much work for the results that I was getting. So what changed for me? Well, in this video, guys, I'm gonna be going through exactly what I was thinking about after year 10 and what caused me to head down thinking about and prioritizing study techniques. I'm gonna be going through the thought provoking questions that allowed me to shift my mindset so that I could go towards being more productive instead of just being busy. So firstly, we'll go through the questions to ask yourself and then we'll go through some productivity tips that are extremely, extremely important. And these are the most important ones that I found to get my 99.95 ATAR. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first question that you wanna ask yourself when you get out of bed, and when you're getting ready for the day, is what is the number one most important thing that I want to get done by the end of today? This is all about prioritizing your time in the most efficient and effective way possible. So you should think about this as a non-negotiable, just like you wouldn't go to bed without brushing your teeth. This is usually a bigger project uh, of yours, and you will make sure that you probably will not go to sleep if you don't finish this project. So you're gonna plan around it so that you make sure that you will get it done. I've covered this a lot more in a recent video about time management, but this has been single-handedly the biggest thing for me in terms of time management. Okay, so onto the question, and this is actually a question that I ask myself quite regularly when I catch myself procrastinate. So I'll ask myself, will my future self in one year be happy with how I'm spending my time right now? And usually this is just when I'm going through my phone or something or checking some random stuff on the internet. So I'll stop myself right there and I'll think about okay well the follow-up question is always going to be you know what do i want to be actually doing instead do i really just want to be scrolling through social media probably not i want to be working towards my long-term goals so often just for me asking this question is enough to catch me out and make me think and recalibrate so I can get back into what I really wanna be doing with my time. So you gotta stop and think about where you really wanna be at the end of the year. Is scrolling through your phone gonna really help you get towards that goal? Probably not. You need to make sure that what you're doing right now is gonna be able to get to you there. It's kind of the same thing as this thing called the five by five rule. If it's not gonna to matter to you in five years time, then there's no point spending more than five minutes thinking about that particular thing. If you really wanna reach your goals in terms of getting a good ATAR or getting into medicine or anything like this, you really need to think about how you're intentionally spending your time. That's the only way that you're gonna get a step closer towards your goal. And if you don't really do this, you could be falling behind, which actually causes you to take more steps to catch back up. So the third question is, is you need to think about the value and the meaning of the particular thing that you're doing at a certain time. Are the practice questions that you're doing right now the most valuable questions that you should be doing? Are you using them at the right stage of your learning? There's no point doing exam questions if you don't know how to do questions from a textbook yet. Also, how do you make sure that the quality of your practice questions are always leading to the same amount of learning? Here's the thing, you don't. Some questions will help you more than others, which is why it's kind of unreliable when you start to rely on practice questions and practice questions and practice questions. And when you see a question you've never seen before on your test and exam, and you can't think about a similar practice question, guess what gets tested? your previous understanding that you built up before even doing those practice questions, which is why that's much more important to focus on. And if you build that up enough, well then the required number of practice questions that you actually have to do to feel confident would actually reduce by a lot as well. And eventually this would save you lots of time. And this is something not only myself that I do, but speaking to a lot of 99.95 students as well, they consistently do this. They're consistently re-evaluating their systems in place when they're going about their studying and the processes that they are using. And honestly, I would say that's one of the biggest things is consistently questioning if what you're doing right now is the best thing that you could be doing. Okay, so those are questions that you should always be thinking about Let's get into some more productivity tips, which are even more important. 
When it comes to evaluating whether the thing you're doing right now is the most valuable thing that you could be doing, we need to think about the Pareto's principle. This was originally for economics, but this was being found to be experimentally true for many, many, many different things, including studying as well. So it's also called the 2080 rule. 20% 20 of the input equals 80% of the results. So for example, 20% of the concepts that you learn for maybe a biology test are gonna to lead to 80% of the marks in the exam. Everything else is just extra pieces of information that you might need to memorize or something like that that might help for that final 20% of results. But as you might know, for topics like biology, the really deep and big concepts are the things to focus on most. This might include things like protein synthesis, translation, transcription, all that sort of stuff. This is also something pretty similar to what Kay He talks about when he talks about 10K work. Do you wanna be doing work that pays $1 an hour or $10 an hour? No, you wanna be doing the thing that's gonna pay 10K an hour. $1 an hour is like fixing the margins on a Word document or something like that. Whereas 10K work, is strategizing and thinking about all these sort of systems that will help you in the execution level when you go about your studying and all this sort of stuff. Guess what the 10K stuff is in the case of studying? It's about reevaluating and looking at the study systems that you have and everything to do with study techniques. That's where the big difference is made. So when you think about what you need to be doing to revise for a test or exam, you wanna be doing always the thing that's the most valuable. Do you really wanna be spending your time highlighting and making your notes look pretty when you're revising or maybe preparing summary sheets? The thing is, is that these have already been proven as low utility which means that they are not that effective for learning and studying. That's the equivalent of doing $1 an hour work. So if we think about the value of techniques like mind mapping and inquiry-based learning, those are even more valuable than active recall and spaced repetition. So they're really important to focus on where you can. Active recall is still part of the process, but you wanna be prioritizing those more efficient study techniques when you can with the particular content that you have to deal with. So when you're learning, you wanna be using mind mapping and inquiry-based learning, for example, and when you're trying to revise and, and rote learn and memorize particular facts of information, statistics, stuff like that, you can use active recall with your flashcards. So this ties in a lot with fighting perfectionism. Remember the margin example I was explaining how you just make your margins look nicely on a Word document? That level of perfectionism is what's actually going to cause you to waste your time. And not only that, you'll probably not focus on the things that were gonna allow you to get higher marks in your test or exam. We already know that making your notes look pretty is not gonna give you a 99.95 ATAR. And rewriting your notes to make them look nicer and readable and summarize and all this sort of stuff is an example of perfectionism. Focus solely on what leads to the most amount of learning in your brain and that will allow you to get higher results. Now, the other thing that I wanna mention is to eat that frog. It sounds a bit weird, but there's a really good idea behind this. So basically it's a metaphor for always tackling the most challenging thing near the start of your day. So remember how I mentioned you should always think about the number one most important thing that you wanna get done? Often that would be the biggest frog. So this now becomes the thing that you just have to get done. And it's usually the thing that you wanna procrastinate on and have no motivation for, but you just need to get up and do it. Always the hardest thing is just getting started with something. So if you set the goal to be really small, like you're just gonna sit down and do one minute of study, what you'll find is that you'll just get a lot more done than one minute. And then if you're feeling bad, you can bail and have a quick break, but at least you've got some study done instead of just procrastinating and sitting on your phone. So what I wanna talk about next is Parkinson's law, which is the idea that work expands to feel the time allotted to it. So if you give yourself two weeks as a deadline, which is your teacher's deadline to finish an English assignment, you would take all of those two weeks before submitting it to your teacher. And you'll probably just spend the five nights before just spending lots of time on that English assignment. When technically you probably could have done it in two nights. This was single-handedly the biggest thing for me when it came to assignments because I would just spend too much time being a perfectionist and trying to make everything look perfect. You have to set some hard goals on yourself to be able to get things done when you're trying to combat Parkinson's law. Things like this included me setting a smart goal for finishing a maybe one paragraph, 250 words of an English assignment in one hour. And I would always pretty much get it done. And if I didn't have that timer, that time pressure and that goal to get it done within an hour, then it'd probably take me like three or four hours when I wasn't doing this. This is something that's extremely important to think about. And really the quality does not get degraded that much at all. Again, this is an example of the 2080 rule because you're gonna spend 20% of your time writing all of this information, which leads to 80% of the results, which is, you know, the bulk of the work is already done. Then you can spend the 80% rest of the time just editing, polishing and reviewing and all this sort of stuff to get those final 20% 
of work done. This was the biggest thing for me so that I could focus on getting rid of my assignments so I could focus on my tests and exams coming up. Being productive and busy are not the same thing. So I hope you can be more productive when thinking about these questions and then employing some of these productivity tips. All right, thanks guys. That's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.